understand what the true Islam is about because it's the thing that they claim to be looking for, the, the claim that they're making when they make their big speeches and pontificate ad infinitum on their great and wonderful principles that they'd like to offer to the people of the ignorant, you know, backward third world countries. A white girl who is a Christian in Colorado was talking with friends and got the notion that she needed to go save the Muslims and others of Africa. She joined some peace group, whatever it was, and went traipsing all the way over to Africa. And she's out here, you know, going from place to place, thinking she's going to save these people. And she had a good, she had a good heart, don't get me wrong, I'm not making fun of her, just that this is the notion that she had. True, they were poor, so poor that people lived in grass huts. They were literally making their houses, and what they lived in, from whatever was available around them, palm trees and grass huts, things like this. But when she visited the village, the people would treat it like it was a festival. And she thought because, oh, I'm American, I'm going to give them civilization here. I'm going to, you know, save them and everything. And this is why they're holding this big celebration when I come. And they, there was food, a lot of food, more than she could eat. And the people would say, no, no, take more, take more, have more food, have more food. Oh. So she goes to the next village. Again, all the food is everywhere. They just say, eat, eat, come on, go out, eat. Oh, we've got cucumbers, tomatoes, whatever, eat. Along the way, she was at one of the villages and the people were there. She said, I cannot eat anymore. And she said, I, I thought you guys were like poor over here. She said, we are. Our children are starving. She said, well, was all this food everywhere I go? There's plenty of food. The guide that she had said, ma'am, it's because you're here. They're Muslims and they're taking everything they have for the whole village because you're the guest. Because this is Islam. It doesn't matter our condition, our guests are first. She started crying. She said, I didn't come over here to hurt these people. I thought I could help them. And after she did a little soul searching, she realized that they actually had more than she did because she did not have the capacity to do what they were doing, to actually take food out of their own children's mouths. They were going from house to house. Do you have anything at all? I have a cucumber. Okay, have you got anything? I have half a tomato. Give it to us. What do you have over here? Okay. Oh, hey, a piece of bread. And they literally were taking everything they had just so she would not feel uncomfortable and insisting that she eat it. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there are a lot of people in the world today who don't have a clue about that. They don't understand that. By the way, this lady made shahada, put on hijab, and went back to Colorado telling the people about Islam. Of course, they came up with this typical, for whoever goes to Islam, they've always got something to say about it. And in her case, probably she got malaria or something. She's been crazy ever since. <laughs> When Cassius Clay, back, was it 50 years ago, 40 years ago? And he was a boxer. He was number one on top. And everybody's looking, Cassius Clay, wow, who is this guy? Amazing. He accepted Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. You know what they said right away? Too many shots to the head. <laughs> That'll do it. Drive you nuts. Went right off. There was a jazz singer that Elton John was so jealous of. He was glad when he became a Muslim and he said, I never had any competition after he got out of the business. Who is he talking about? Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens. I think he was Greek Orthodox or something, I don't remember, but he was Christian, at least by name. 
But when he entered Islam, all the people that used to love it, oh, because he's, he's got a great voice. Even today, he's got a good voice. And very creative with his music. But as soon as he became Muslim, you know what they said? Because he had been in the hospital. Too many drugs. Look at that. And by the way, it was TV, not drugs he was in there for. But this is the kind of thing that people will say. And it means that they have to try to explain. Why do you have to explain? If somebody decided, for instance, they don't want to be a Republican, they want to be a Democrat, that's in my country. Why do you have to explain something? Why can't it be? That's just a choice. Why does it have to make an excuse? And they do. You should hear some of the things that people said, even about me and my family, when we came to Islam. It was a lot harder, though. They had to work really hard to come up with something because, hey, everybody knew us. Everybody knew what we were all about. My dad started the Concerned Christian Centers. And he always had donated and worked to build things and gave, never took anything. So uh, you couldn't even twist it around to, oh, they're trying to use this as a front for their business, like some Christians do. We didn't do that. Each time somebody goes to Islam, you will see there's going to be resistance. There's going to be heavy resistance. When I came to Islam, I got into Islam, and <laughs> some of my relatives were telling me, oh, stay away from those Muslims. And when I would explain, because that was the one that really called my family to Christianity to start with, okay? So when I go to Islam and I came back to them, now they were like, whoa, you know, we can't listen to you anymore. I said, well, I found the next step up. Come on, look. Something happened. A very bad experience happened with some Muslims. They did something really bad. Which, in fact, I never tell the story because it's that bad. Still, it was only a couple and it was certainly not representative of Islam it was some bad people that's all and again they come to me right see see we told you we told you now come on back and be with us I said for what I came in Islam not for you not for them I came in Islam because it's the only thing that makes any sense Islam is the only Thing that offers proof for everything it says. And there's nothing illogical about one staying one. One stays one. Hello? What's the problem? You don't have to go through this big contortion of, well, you see three and one and the Trinity is, and the way that, uh, uh, you, uh, I just have faith. <laughs> you don't have to do that. And I like that. One equals one. End of story. No more explanation after that. And as far as Jesus being God, Son of God, part of God, what's the nature of Jesus? Simple, he was a human being, but he was a miracle creation of a human being, just like Adam and Eve. Next question. And so, when something like this happens and somebody comes into Islam, should it be that they've got a real easy road? should be real easy, yeah? Because if you go to the right way, why would it be difficult? It should be real simple. If you use that logic, then what happens is it should be then that all Muslims are in good shape all the time. It should be that, according to that logic, Muslims would never have any hard time. They would always be in a good way. Make sense? One of the places that I'm supposed to go speak coming up uh, in July sent me something I read it yesterday and one of the speeches they, they like to name the speeches these are guys that do a speech one I mean a, a conference maybe once in their whole life they put it together they bring speakers in they just give you a title or something I remember one time they said uh, coming to Islam what can I do with that and I said that's the name of the speech well I said what can I do with that in, in this case, they wanted me to talk about the happy prophets. You know? Prophets, the happy people, something like this. And I looked at that and I went, what? 
I mean, this, what did you say? Is like a cartoon? Yeah, it sounded like a cartoon show. Okay, the happy prophets are coming on, you know. <laughs> Content, yeah, content. That's what we decided today is a better word. That a lot talks about believers. Rabbi Allahu An or Rabbi An. The the people are pleased with the law, and Allah He's pleased with them. Pleased or content, but not happy. I don't mean that you can't be happy and be a Muslim, but what I'm saying is that prophets especially are going to be the ones who are going to suffer the most. And this is because why? They're getting a huge reward for what they're doing. And Allah tells us in the Quran, it's in chapter 29, the ankle boot or spider, a'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, ahasa bin nas an yutriku an yakhulu amana, do human beings think they're going to be left alone because they said we believe? And they won't put into yuftanu, which is from fitna. It means big trial, calamity, difficulty. Squeeze you, you know. <laughs> because, Allah continues, he did the same thing to the people before you to show who are the truthful and who are the liars. Because if you're really true, you believe in the law. And you want to do something about it. Okay. Go ahead and try. And you might say, well, why? Why would that be a difficulty? Part of that is to understand what the real purpose of life is. Part of that is to understand who your creator really is. To understand that would be then to understand your role in all of this. And then you would find out what you're supposed to be doing. And there's where the rub comes. Not rub in Arabic, rub in English. The rub. The problem that you're going to have is that you would soon realize that you can't do what you want to do. That we're here to do what he wants us to do. And if we understood that, then there are a lot of things we'd have to give up. You narrow your options down to be a real Muslim. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to give up their desires, their lusts, their personal goals. And that's where the problem comes. So if somebody's attacking you as a Muslim, if somebody's even attacking Islam in front of you, realize that it's not, it's not really you, it's not us as a whole. The problem is that they're responding to something that's coming to them that they don't want to accept. They don't want to accept it. Because it would mean they'd have to give up all the stuff they're doing. You follow me? That's the problem. In the West, for the most part, not everybody. The, by the way, it's, not, it's wrong to sum up and say everybody's like this, isn't it? Isn't that wrong? You don't like if somebody said that about us, right? No, we're human beings. We have different ideas, hopes and goals. True. For the most part, Muslims are good. We would say that. And for the most part, the Muslims are following Islam and doing a pretty darn good job. But there are some stinkers out there. True. And in the same case, when you look to the West, it's wrong to say all oh, the West is like this. Because they're not. There are also good people there. And they're also human beings, and they have goals, they have desires, they have things they're trying to do as well. And there are some, actually, who are lurking, looking, searching, trying to find the truth, and they would love to know some of the things that you take for granted every day. It would probably be, and I'm not really... Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm right when I say this. That many of the people of the West would love to hear about it until they found out it was Islam. Simply because of the preconceived notion of Islam and Muslims. But if they knew how beautiful is this deen, this way, and how it solves so many of the problems that they have, they would be very happy with it. 
So by now, I think we should give you some examples of that. I've made my 